This is Suave from Spitballing Radio here with the man. I like to call him a legend because I've been listening to his music for about a decade now. My man Cody Chestnut. And time is short. He just did a performance here at SOB's. You know, we, we listened to the new album, you know what I mean? And everybody was chanting for the headphone masterpiece. But like you said, you know, you have kids now, you're 42 years old. You can't really live in that era of when you first recorded the headphone masterpiece so you didn't want to perform, you know, that material. How did you come up with, how did you come up with the inspiration to do that first album? Um, it just happened, to be honest with you. I, I always write and I'm, and I'm always creating. At that point in time, I was in a band already. And we had just gotten some recording equipment with our um, equipment advance from the record company. Mm -hmm. And so I would just set the equipment up in my room. Um, speakers, four track, uh, cassette recorder, uh, drum machine, keyboard, keyboard and microphone. And just work on ideas all day. Well, uh, after the band broke up, come to find out you know, all the material that I had been writing, possibly for the, the next album, uh, with the band that I was in because we had already recorded one album so I was just writing material um, thinking that most of it may have been for the next album with my band and possibly some material just to give away to people um, as songs but it turned out that was the body of work that they created the headphone masterpiece so I was just doing what I do every single day which is make music and just create just to keep my head clear to keep my life life source going you know and uh, and I found out uh, the album that I've been wanting to release the whole time was right there in the room with me. Um, how did the Roots pick the seed? Because originally I know that song was yours. Right. You know what I mean? I had listened to that track a whole bunch of times and then, you know, Black Thought and then, you know, they dropped verses. Well, Black Thought dropped a couple yeah. verses to mm -hmm. it and you did the chorus and they actually put you in a video which I thought was a a huge paying homage to you. Yeah. How did they come to you about picking that song? Well, they didn't come to me about picking it, they just picked it. <laughs> uh, one day, my, my cousin that was working with me, uh, the manager, um, he was my manager at the time, and um, the people that worked for the Roots reached out to him, and he brought it to me and said they wanted to uh, re record it. And at first I was, I was a little apprehensive because I had just gotten dropped from a record company so I was, I was still a bit upset, you know, and I was like, I don't want to deal with any major record labels. But um, he convinced me that it would definitely be a good move because we had just released that for a masterpiece. So he said it would be a, a great opportunity for a dual campaign, you know, the Roots album would promote the headphone masterpiece. So this is why it makes sense, it made sense. And also, I did appreciate the fact that the Roots play real music and real musicians. Yeah. And uh, so that made it easier to make the decision, the fact that they were really trying to create music. How many record labels have you been on? Uh, only one, really. That was Hollywood Records. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I was here to watch your concert tonight. Do you not play any songs from the Headphone Masterpiece at all? From no, not right now. Not right now? No, it's all about promoting the new album? For sure, because I wanted this energy to be consistent. Okay. You know, um, this, excuse me. Go ahead. The, um, this body of work to me, the, me the message is more focused, so I make sure that I don't cross it up with anything else because it may become a distraction if I do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have amazing tour dates coming up. Like I said, we're here at SOB's. I came to see you tonight. I know right from this interview, you're on your way to the hotel, and then it's a flight out to the West Coast. Right. How many dates do you have set up for this presentation for the next album? Well, we're kind of just getting, getting to the point of, uh, of setting things up for the promo. So, um, I'm not quite sure what's on the calendar next, but um, there's a possibility that we may be going to the UK pretty soon. Oh. And uh, maybe back to Europe. We've been to Europe quite a bit. We just got back actually uh, a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the album is going to be released through Polydor France. Mm -hmm. We're going to license, it, license the record to that territory. 
So you might be on that road there for some uh, promo as well. Will this album be released through iTunes? How can people get a yeah, hold of it? It will be coming through iTunes as well. Uh, the company that's handling the distribution in, in the U.S. territory is, is a company by the name of Red Eye Distribution. So it will definitely be on iTunes uh, once they put their push behind as well. Okay, any message to the fans? Because I know you got to get out of here. I don't want to hold you up. No, just um, be open to growth and, and development because that's what this body of work is all about. Uh, me growing as a human being, as an artist, as a family man, many different things. So I just encourage each and every one of you just to be open to growth and embrace it. All right, this is Swaz here with the man, the legend, Cody Chestnut. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your time. Thank you, my friend. All right, thank you. Peace.